Hi, and welcome back to Dumpster PC's unboxing and overview of the 990 FXA D3 motherboard from Gigabyte, the AM3 Plus board. So since the last episode or segment, we've taken the board out of the box and taken the board out of the anti-static bag. Let's have a look at the I.O. that's on the back of the board that will appear on your back plate. So here we have eight red USB 2.0 ports, one PS2 mouse or keyboard port, and then to the right of that you've got one SPDIF out of the Toslink variety for digital audio. You've got another four USB, so here are the eight USB 2.0 ports in total, two above the PS2 port, then the Toslink, then four USB 2.0 ports here, red. Then we've got two USB 3.0 ports, courtesy of an e-tron tech controller that we'll look at closer later. Then we've got the RJ45 Gigabit LAN, courtesy of a Realtek chip that we'll also look at later. Two more USB 2.0 ports. And finally, the six standard audio jacks for surround sound. Now, Let's go up and have a look at the board. So we'll start with the VRM area, seeing as it's close to the back of the I.O. Here, we've got the 4 plus 1 phase VRM. And you can see our 8, oh sorry, you can see our 4 chokes here, plus 1, 5 chokes. So we've got the full 5 phases, so it's a split plane board. So 4 phases for the CPU V-Core one phase for the CPU integrated memory controller. Now each phase has four low RDS MOSFETs as you can see here. And there is the 8-pin EPS 12 volt or ATX 12 volt connector. Over here is the PWM controller for the 4 plus 1 phase VRM. Then we've also got the CPU fan here. It's a 4-pin, so you can take 4- and 3-pin CPU fans. And here we've got the retention mechanism. And this is that new AM3 Plus split retention mechanism. So there isn't pieces of plastic going along the bottom and the top. And supposedly this will help with airflow. On the back of the board, which we'll see later, there's also a steel back plate that these bolt through into. So the AM3 Plus socket, or as Foxconn here labels it, an AM3B, actually has 942 pins rather than 941, or pin holes rather than 941, as an AM3 board would have. And you can see the difference here. Here there's a little area where only one pin is missing in this pin array. In an AM3 it would be it would have a pin on top that's also missing. There would be a two little pairs of pins there. So here we've got our heatsink that's on the 990FX North Bridge and I'll try and get it on an angle so you can actually see that it's it's fairly sizable. It's got a chunk that's missing on the right hand side so that it doesn't actually block access from the PCI Express by one slot here. And now let's look at the slots. So, we've actually got four PCI Express by 16 slots, and two of them are the full 16 lanes, and you can tell which are the full 16 lanes by which ones actually have this type of latch mechanism. So this one and this one are actually the 16 lane variety. And that means that if you're running a multi-GPU configuration, SLI or Crossfire, you actually have two slot distances between the two slots that you will use for video cards. Now this is good if you've got a dual wide or a dual slot cooler on your video card so that you still have some room for air to enter that heatsink and fan. And so these two PCI Express by 16 slots are fed with four lanes each. And all four of these 16 lane PCI Express slots, their lanes come from the North Bridge, come from the 990FX that we saw in the manual earlier. 
and these two PCI Express by one slots are actually coming from the SB950, the south bridge just here, under this little heatsink. So now, let's look at our USB 3.0 controller. You probably can't read that, but this is an e-tron tech EJ168A. Now when USB 3 first came onto the scene, all motherboards used an NEC controller. And it was a UD720200. And it was the first USB 3 controller on the market. Since then, a lot more controllers have come on board. Gigabyte seems to have standardized on the e-tron tech controller that you see here. Other board makers are using other controllers. So Asus uses the Asmedia controller, which makes sense seeing as Asmedia is a subsidiary of Asus. And if we look here, you can see, although you probably can't, so I'll tell you what you can see, we've got the audio codec, which is here, the ALC889, and the LAN controller, which is the RTL 8111E, both powered by the CRAB, both powered by Realtek. So moving further down the board, here we've got an ITE Super IO chip. It's a little bit washed out by the light, but you can just make out the markings. You've also got Gigabyte's two SPI ROM chips. These are 32 megabits, so 4 megabyte SPI ROMs. And here is the main one. And here is the backup BIOS that will kick in in the event of failure of the main one, or a misflash. Over here is a 4-pin system fan header. Here is your front panel connectors, all color-coded, which is nice, and a plus sign showing which is the positive terminal on each of those. Here you've got a, connected for a connector for a trusted platform module. And here, alongside that last PCI Express by 16 slot, that's only four lanes, you've got front panel USB 3 in red. You've got more front panel USB, more front, pa front panel USB, and an old school COM port that comes from the Super I.O. chip and front panel audio and right here you can see the branding of the ATI Crossfire and NVIDIA's SLI certification. So let's make our way back down the board past the AM3 Plus socket that, that we've discussed to the DIMM slots. So here are your four DDR3 DIMM slots that can take up to 32 gig if you max them out with 8 gig DIMMs. Now right now 8 gig DIMMs are hard to find, but presumably you'll keep this board for a while and so they'll become more readily available on the market. And here is your 24 pin ATX power connector. There is your button cell, your CR2032 standard 3 volt button cell. And back to the socket. So this being an AM3 Plus board, you can actually run any AM3 or AM3 Plus, so the FX series CPUs. And we have it on good authority that the, this board actually came flashed with the F3 BIOS release, which is enough to run an FX chip out of the box. So you won't have to go and get an AM3 CPU, some, you know, Sempron that you've spent 30 bucks on, to go and flash the BIOS to a newer version just so you can boot an FX processor. You won't have to do that. So there's the board. Oh, we haven't mentioned serial ATA. So these six, six gigabit SATA ports all come from the SB950 under this heatsink here. And they're all actually angled, right angled off the side of the board. So that means that you won't have to worry about having a long video card and that making you lose access to those SATA ports. And we'll be right back.